In this tutorial, we're going to be setting up the non-standard landscape material uh, that we created for Project Pegasus, or at least a very simple version of it, uh, showing how we can use the ID map that we created in Houdini in conjunction with texture arrays to create a very optimal uh, and sort of seamless workflow between Houdini and Unreal, uh, reducing the overall shader complexity compared to traditional or standard landscape materials, uh, as well as reducing the compilation time uh, and use of memory uh, amongst many other things. So we're going to create uh, a new level, an empty level. I'm just gonna quickly throw in a sky atmosphere, a skylight, a directional light, like so. And then we're going to go to the landscape editing mode. You can see we press shift two to enter that. I'm gonna create from the basic template a simple landscape. Okay, so next up, we're going to load in the ID map texture that we created and exported in the last session. And we're just going to load that up, have a look at it. We're going to multiply the brightness by 255 just to verify that it contains the information that we expect it to. And then you can see it does. So we're going to revert that change, put the brightness back on one. And we're going to set up a material that, first of all, is just going to display this, uh, this texture. Uh, so that we can ensure that it's mapping correctly onto our terrain. So I'm going to create a new material, like so. I'm going to call this ID map test. And we're going to drag the texture inside of here, just like we did inside of the texture settings. We're going to multiply the value by 255. You can see that immediately renders there. And the reason I'm using the red channel here is because it's only a single channel texture, so there isn't any RGB information. And we're then going to just undock this from the sidebar, so it's permanently showing the details like so, because I'm an Unreal 4 boy. And I'm going to go and drag that material onto the landscape. Okay, quite noisy. If we zoom in a bit closer, we can see that that is actually showing up but it's mapped at the wrong scale. So we're going to put down a landscape layer coordinates. I'm going to set the mapping scale to 505 because that's the size of the landscape in Unreal. And now we can see it's mapping that texture to the terrain. And it kind of looks like it's white or black. Um, it's actually uh, different shades of gray. Uh, each of those values corresponds to uh, a different ID, uh, which is going to represent a different set of textures or material that we want to assign to that region of the terrain. So you can imagine you might have dirt, where it's gray here, blending into grass, where it's white, blending into some other material, where it's black over here. To make that visualization a little bit clearer uh, and mirroring what we see inside of Houdini over here, if I just bring this up, that, that sort of compares to the, the remapped ID here, which goes from white to red. Um, here's the, the raw ID map, uh, where you can barely see any information at all. And then this visualization of colors, uh, which is the clearest representation of those different IDs. So we're going to set up a visualizer inside of Unreal that looks quite similar to this visualize colors. I do have a sort of note here, which is that it seems that only a portion of the ID map is currently being rendered on the tile in Unreal. Um, so let's have another little look. A little bit hard to tell, but I definitely feel like maybe we're missing something. So I might need to modify the landscape coordinate scale at a later point. One way in which we can convert uh, uh, this black and white image to sort of a colored preview, is we can use a hue shift node. Like so. And then we can set the default color to just be red, like so. That's going to plug into the texture. And we're going to use this ID map texture as the percentage by which to hue shift. So by default, the percentage is going to be very small. And that's because, as before, the actual values contained within the ID texture are very small. So we do need to multiply them by some factor. And then we can see each of those separate IDs is represented as a different color. So quite clearly delineating uh, which material is going to get assigned where. 
But uh, we need to double check uh, that the values contained within the ID map are actually being uh, sort of shown correctly because we want our ID map to essentially uh, count up from zero to the number of IDs that we have. So the first idea being one, second two, three, four, five, six, and so on, so that we can use that index to index into the Atlas texture that we will eventually be reading from. So to double check that we uh, sort of visually check that this is what we expect it to be, we can put down a node uh, called debug scalar values. We can plug the output of the multiplier into there, into the number. And then we can wire up the landscape coordinates into the UVs. All right, so we see this kind of mess of numbers there, which doesn't really help us. What we need to do is we just need to scale those UVs by some factor that allows us to see uh, sort of those different regions being displayed as different numbers. There we go, we require the frac node there um, just to ensure that uh, we actually get sort of repeating. In fact, I'll show you what the issue was there. We just wire the landscape coordinates into the uh, emissive channel. We can see those UVs being rendered. We multiply by 16. It's scaling those UVs there. But what we really want is the sort of the repeating sort of tiling UVs. So what the frac does there is it uh, keeps only the decimal part of the, the UVs, which essentially is sort of tiling uh, that UV across according to whatever number we plug in. Like so. So now we can wire the debug scalar values back in. And we can see the numbers now are uh, sort of roughly, uh, is providing different numbers according to different regions, different tiles of that terrain. I'm gonna set the number of digits to be a maximum of two, like so, or even one, because we should expect only to see whole integer numbers. And we have an issue. Every number, uh, every tile of the train currently has a value below one. And that is despite the fact that we're multiplying the contents of the ID map texture by 255, which should be sort of taking that zero to one range and shifting it uh, to be between zero and 255. So what's the issue here? Why, why is this not showing up correctly? Why is it not showing any whole numbers? Well, we need to go back to our terrain ID map texture. We need to do a couple of things. First of all, we should turn off sRGB. We're gonna get an error straight away. That's why it popped back to the material, but ignore that for now. We're also gonna set the compression to be grayscale. Again, another error pops up. So just double check, compression is set to grayscale and sRGB is turned off. What that means is that uh, we're not doing sRGB compression. The values stored in the texture are expected to be linear. Uh, that means that the uh, there's, a, oh, there's quite a lot. <laughs> there's quite a lot. Yeah, I, I struggle to find the words to explain that succinctly. Um, but essentially, it just means that we give equal sort of value to the uh, every part of the range and we're not biasing the detail towards the darker or lighter parts of the textures. Um, that might be sort of redundant explanation for this specific use case. You just need to know that sRGB should be off. Uh, it can be helpful to think of if black and white sRGB off, if color sRGB on. Uh, and we're gonna turn compression settings to be grayscale because it simply is a grayscale texture and this affords uh, a higher amount of uh, data to that single channel. Um, so then we go and click on the texture. I'm gonna set that to be linear grayscale like so. And now if we hit apply, we can see that we're getting some numbers again. And those numbers are uh, preceding the decimal place and they're whole numbers. If I was to increase the number of decimal places to three, you can see that despite some sort of weird distortions, uh, which are occurring where the different uh, layers are sort of overlapping each other or the different colors of the ID map, the different parts of the ID map, um, for the most part, we can see that there's sort of one whole number per tile. And this will become more distinct if I increase the tiling factor further. We should start to see regions uh, that share the same ID map value, regions which have a different, let's go even higher. Like so. Apart from some sort of rounding errors that we're seeing, some sort of weird distortions, for the most part, we get 
large sort of areas that are covered by the same value. And we can just go ahead and multiply the output to make these regions clearer with that hue shift we did previously. And now we can see that we get sort of these different regions across the terrain. But we've lost that very clear coloration we were seeing previously. And what we've got instead of these sort of rainbow colored regions uh, that sort of intersect the, uh, the whole numbers. Uh, and this is, this is not correct. This is not what we want. We would expect to see um, sort of, sort of uh, patches of color like we did previously. Um, and this again comes back to the fact that previously we hadn't turned on the, uh, we hadn't turned off sRGB compression. So for this hue shift, we actually need to go ahead and multiply by some other factor, which is actually 255 divided by the number of layers, which is five. This is gonna stretch that range. There you go. So now we see where it's one, it has one color. Where it's zero, uh, where it's five, it has one color. So actually let's go ahead and divide it by 255, multiply by 255 divided by six. Believe there you go now five one zero uh, they all have different colors but we're still seeing these kind of rainbow fall off regions so we don't want that we want it to be very sort of hard binary changes between different numbers so we're going to go back to the texture and we need to change a couple more settings we need to make sure that it's always very clear which index is being used so to do that we're going to turn off the we're going to set the filter to nearest and suddenly we get what we're looking for. So what's happening by default is that the way that uh, Unreal is reading textures, if I just brighten it up, oh, that was a bit too much, too much, there we go. The way that Unreal is uh, brightening its textures, or, or sorry, uh, reading its textures, is it's automatically applying some filtering there, sort of smoothing between the different pixel values, which looks great for color maps and a variety of other maps, but it's not what we want here where we're using this as an index. So we need to set to nearest. Now you see we get those solid pixel boundaries, uh, which clearly sort of delineates the different regions of the texture. Make sure to set brightness back to one. One, there we go. And there we have got the different colors representing the different ID maps. And the number is also there to just clearly show that we're actually getting the sort of int integer, <laughs> uh, inverted commas integer values. Um, that we need to index into our texture. All right, so put the number of digits back to one and now it should be even clearer. Um, although actually the fact that zero is represented by just a dot, I don't particularly like, so there we go. Okay, so that's kind of part one. Um, that's how we uh, read the ID map. Uh, and now we need to sort of figure out how do we actually use the, that ID map to sort of index into a texture array. Well, that's quite simple, um, but it does require us to have some textures to begin with. So let's go ahead and open up the Quixel bridge. Let's go ahead and find some surfaces, ground, and I'm just not gonna be fussy. Oh, I do need to sign in. It's a pain. Um, so you can just go ahead. I'm going to do this. You can go ahead and pick just uh, up to two, three to five textures that you want to use in the texture array. And I'm just going to kind of skip through this bit and then get in straight into setting up the array. All right. So I've nearly finished uh, sending the materials that I want to use from Quixel to, uh, to Unreal. So just downloaded them and then hit this little export uh, to Unreal button. So you can see those have been populating my content browser. And uh, now we're going to set up the texture array that reads these textures, uh, which can then be used inside of Material. So I'm going to go back to content. And because I've been a little bit messy, I'm just going to make a new folder, Pegasus. Move these both inside of there. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a texture 2D array. T a for texture array and I'm going to call this Pegasus example actually just to keep things simpler colors 
I'm going to double click the texture array to open it. And you can see that it looks very similar to a regular texture interface, uh, but a bit different over here. There's a few different options. Uh, and I'm mostly concerned with a source 2D sort of area of source textures. I'm going to add five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just going to sort of drag in one by one the textures that I've just imported. Like so. Maybe I'll go opt for another grass so there's more grass and less dirt. Like so. So there we have uh, our textures. Now I need to go and turn on bitmaps, otherwise we'll end up with a horrible aliasing and sort of shimmering in the distance. Compression set to default, but these textures are color, so we want to make sure sRGB is enabled. And we can see now they look correct. And we can go ahead and save the texture array. I don't know what the limit to the number of textures is inside of an array. Um, <laughs> so uh, you sort of expand at your own peril. Um, I also haven't yet sort of found whether it's better to have more texture arrays uh, with less textures in them or just one giant texture array. So that's, that's, we'd love to hear thoughts on that. And then I'm going to go back to my Pegasus folder. I'm going to open up my ID map test material. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to create a new material that's actually going to duplicate the previous material. M read array. Here we go. I'm going to open the new material and delete all of the preview logic, but not the coordinates in the texture sample of the ID map. I'm going to drag in the texture array. And you can see that this texture 2D array just comes in as a regular texture sample, or appears to. But it's slightly different in that instead of just taking 2D coordinates like so, you can actually supply it with 3D coordinates. The third coordinate being the index that we want to read from the array. So I realized I accidentally deleted the multiply. That's very important that we keep the multiply by 255 in there, like so. Additionally, if you want to make sure there are no rounding errors that prevent this from working correctly, you can put in a an extra round after the multiply. And that's going to ensure that we only have whole numbers, 0 to 5 in this case, which are fed to the array. And then because this is, a, is an RGB sort of texture, essentially, we're going to take the output of the RGB pin, plug it into the base color, and hit apply, save. Then we're going to select our landscape and assign the read array material. OK, so we have something. First of all, let's deal with a very obvious tiling scale issue. So it's important that the ID map is mapped across the whole terrain. On the other hand, we want the tiling textures to have some tiling factor applied much like we did with the de debug scalar values. And this time we're going to parameterize it. Parameter, parameterize it. I'm going to call that parameter tiling. And let's set the default to be 100, which means it's going to tile 100 times across the terrain. And now we could start to see something that feels like it's moving in the right direction. So we get grass, moss, and dirt all being assigned across those different regions of the terrain. Okay, so now by now you understand the kind of basic principles of how do we set up uh, and use an ID map texture in Unreal and then read from an array. Um, in the next session, uh, we're going to be looking at the slightly more involved setup that is required in order to achieve smooth blending between these different regions. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.